Welcome. In today's lesson, we'll be discussing the why of programming by reviewing mnemonics and having a discussion that relates to the following topics. We're going to start by talking about the difference between recursion and iteration. We're going to learn what the difference is programmatically and conceptually. And then we're going to talk about the difference between an object in Python that is iterable versus an iterator object. After that, we're going to talk about a specific Python construct called a generator and how that goes along with the keyword yield. And then we'll end by talking about comprehensions. We'll talk about what a comprehension is and what kind of object types we can use with them. And remember that hail is caused when raindrops are lifted up into the atmosphere during a thunderstorm and then supercooled by temperatures below freezing. That turns them into the ice balls that they are. So let's learn our first pair of mnemonics for recursion and iteration. So we're learning two mnemonics here. And the first one is a rocking chair, and it's going to represent the topic of recursion. And the second one in the rocking chair is going to be an animator, like a classic Disney animator that draws a cartoon frame by frame. And it's going to represent the topic of iteration. Okay, now jumping back to the rocking chair that the animator is sitting on for recursion, there's a couple of reasons why I chose this. One is because I like the idea how the structure itself is sort of what makes the pattern. It kind of rocks back and forth with just one chair. But going further, I imagine sometimes like four or five old men in front of an old folks home, for example, and they're all on rocking chairs. So just imagine them lined up like on the front porch and the one on, if we're looking at him, the one on our far left rocks forward but he doesn't rock back, he just stays there. He holds himself in that position and then waits for the guy next to him to rock forward and hold it, and then rock forward and hold it, rock forward and hold it, and then the fifth guy will rock forward and hold it. But the guy in the very end, the fifth one, the last one to go, he also rocks back. And then the person next to him rocks back, and then the person next to him rocks back. So the very first person who rocked forward waits until everyone else has rocked forward and rocked back. Now with iteration, we're talking about something that happens over and over again, just like we were with recursion. But I think of this more as like an animator whose job it is to animate um, like a Disney movie frame by frame. The process is the same. They sit down, they take a new sheet of paper, they draw out the character, and then they put it on top of the character that was right before it, but in a slightly different way. They get another sheet of paper, they do the same thing. And it, you know, in our situation, it would actually be like drawing the same character over and over again. It wouldn't be like a changing thing, but it's that process. But eventually you'd be done with the animation, you would be done with the movie, and the process would be done. So that's more just like doing something for every item that comes by, like on a conveyor belt until no more items come by. Okay, so a little more programmatically speaking, when a function needs to call on itself to solve a problem, when it actually has a function inside of it that needs to solve its own problem, or it's done in a way where it's waiting for the answer from something inside of it, then we have recursion. It actually means in Latin to run back. So you can imagine it like the old men on the rocking chairs, like you run down the line, you get something, and then you kind of run back. Now, iteration I consider a much more general term because we're just taking each item in some kind of a sequence, some kind of a list, and we're doing something to each one. Like the letter A comes in and like we write it down and then move it away. And then the letter B comes in and we do something and move it away. So this one is much more like we're standing in place and all of the things are coming by and then we keep doing the same thing over and over again. So with iteration, I think of it as a much more general term for taking each item of something. So for example, say we have a list and inside of the list is a bunch of numbers, a bunch of um, floats, for example. We might take the first one and then round it and then take the second one and then round it and then take the third one and then round it. So it's almost like this conveyor belt. Each time we get a float and then we take the decimal part off, make it an integer and push it along. And then another float comes along and we you know, do the same process over and over again. And that is more general, I think, than the specifics of how to solve it by going down the chain and then coming back again. Okay, so now I'm going to throw a couple more mnemonics and concepts at you, sort of in another pairing. And this time we're going to be talking about what it means for an object in Python to be iterable versus what it means if an object is an iterator. And we're going to use the mnemonic for iterable as a dog who can chase its own tail and catch it. So it has to have a long enough tail that it can like, you know, bite it and have victory on its tail. And then an iterator, we're gonna use a cat litter box. Okay, so jumping back to iterable, we have this dog chasing its tail. And the way I think about this is some dogs don't have a long enough tail to catch. 
In the same way, we're asking Python, is this object iterable? Is it something that we can catch? And instead of catching your tail, what we're actually saying is, can it be iterated on? So is it like a conveyor belt? Like earlier, where we talked about having a list that was full of floats. Like, is it a list full of floats that we can do an action to every time? Because some types just don't have list attributes. You can't put them on a conveyor belt. They might be one thing, like a float by itself is much different than a list that is full of floats. So a float by itself is something that is not iterable. Okay, and now jumping to iterator, which is our um, cat box. Some objects aren't just iterable, but they have a specific way that we work with them. They're not just able to be put on uh, a conveyor belt, but they have like a specific shape and type of conveyor belt that Python likes to work with asynchronously. And when I mean asynchronously, I mean that it doesn't have to be done right then in order. So say something like uh, a cat litter box. The cat comes and you know uses the litter box whenever it needs to, and then it leaves. Okay, So that happens at any time throughout the day. It doesn't matter. But say you're going to clean the cat box when you get home. And then it doesn't really matter which like you know piece of, piece of who you get first. You just have to get them all out. So it can be like, I don't know, the one that's closest to you, and then you throw it in the garbage, and the next one, I haven't done like a cat box since I was a kid, but just, it doesn't matter really exactly the order that you're cleaning it in, it doesn't matter the time when the cat comes and leaves its droppings. So to me, that's got a good metaphor for what we're talking about. So for me, that's got a good metaphor for a type of Python object that is an iterator, a specific way you can work with it. It's a cat litter box with its own things inside of it that get taken care of. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more programmatically about what we would do with an object to find out if it's an iterable object. So we know some can be looped over and some can't be. So the best way to do it is just to test it. Construct a for loop and see if you put it on the right side of your um, loop function at the very top there, if it works. Put something inside like just print hello, and then see if you can loop over it. Um, basic things like Python lists, tuples, dictionary sets, these are all examples of iterables. OK, so let's talk a little bit more programmatically about how we find out if our Python type, which we might not know at the time, is iteratable or not. So if it is, we can put a loop together, and we can use it at the top. So say we do a for loop, and we want to say um, you know, 15 times, why don't you loop over this and print something like the word hello. If it works, we know it's an iterable object. If it's not, then it's not. So that's the best way is really just to test it. And we know some of the Python basics like lists, tuples, dictionaries, and sets are all going to be example of inbuilt iterable objects. But you'll always be working with new types as you program your own thing. So just test it out, see what happens. Now, an iterator is a bit different of a story because although it's not completely specific, like a generator, which we're going to learn next, we are asking a more specific question. We're asking, is this Python object able to be run asynchronous? Meaning, can it be paused? Can it then be later resumed at a different point in the code? Does it have sort of a memory about its own state and what part of the sequence that it's in? So you can think of these as a list-like object because the lists are always kept in order, but you shouldn't think of these as something like a dictionary that's kept out of order or a set that's kept out of order, which can be iterated on. Like our conveyor belt example, as long as you're rounding each float as it comes along, it doesn't really matter if all of the floats come in order. But in the case where we want to pause and then restart later and know that we've made it through, say, half of the objects, we do need it to actually be in order. We need to say there's 10 objects, we're on number five, and now we're going to pause. This is asynchronous, we're going to do some other stuff, and then we're going to come back and complete it. So that's the difference. OK, so now's a good time to distinguish between all of the group types we have, which were iterable, the things that we learned in chapter one, and now a new type, a type that we haven't introduced before. But this one is an iterator. And it's a very specific type that Python understands. Now, for the mnemonic, I chose a gas generator, one that you might have seen outdoors at a, a fair or something where they need electricity out in a field. Um, and then also, along with that, there's a keyword that's specific to generators that's yield. So we also have the generator sitting next to a yield sign, a driving sign here in the US. 
Now, one of the reasons I like the mnemonic of a gas generator is that if you think about how they work, they might have, say, two gallons of gas in them. And the point is to turn on the engine and get electricity from it, have an outlet that you can plug things into. And they can be paused and restarted, and they'll remember, in a sense, where they are. So you say you start with two gallons and you don't add any more, and you use it until uh, two hours, for example, and there's only one gallon left, and then you turn it off to conserve it, and then you turn it back on. You're going to be right where you stopped. It's going to sort of be paused. It'll be asynchronous. You can come right back to where you were. And then just taking the mnemonic a little bit further, I like to imagine the yield sign is something that can glow. It's like a kind of a neon open sign. And it's actually plugged into the gas generator, so that's where it's getting its power to be uh, lit up. Just a way to kind of tie the two together in a mnemonic physical sense. So now let's talk a little more programmatically about our generator before we see some examples in the next lesson. So let's remember that a generator is an iterable object. It's also an iterator because it can be ran asynchronously and it's very specific. The term generator is also an abbreviation for generator dash iterators if you look at the Python documentation. So it's a special type of object that can be used. It can be paused and it can be restarted and we'll see some examples of how this works. And in the right situations, it's really powerful and in general, it doesn't always come up. So just remember that you have this tool when you're programming and in situations where you're like, ah, I don't want to loop over this thing and then go do something else and then come back and have the loop out of sync, this is the tool for you. And the yield statement is what we can use to break out of this, to pause it in a way and come back to it later. Now with the generator object specifically, there's also functions like next and iter. And you can wrap these around your generator and they can be used in special ways to find the next element in line or to iterate over all of them. And now for our final mnemonic, we have a jack-in-the-box, and it represents the topic of comprehensions. Now, the reason I chose a jack-in-the-box for comprehensions is because, first off, comprehensions, they are much less code to do the same kind of thing that a function in a loop could do. So I think of them as compressed, like a comprehension, in the way that a jack-in-the-box can be compressed down into a small, tiny area. I also like to think of them as something that helps us comprehend just how scary clowns are because they like, boom, like pop into your face and you're like, oh yeah, I always got to be scared of clowns. And finally, I kind of like the winding quality that an iterable item kind of has, like a dog chasing its tail, and the fact that a jack-in-the-box is something that you wind in this sort of circular motion over and over again. So those three things put together kind of make it the good mnemonic for me. Okay, so what's a comprehension? More programmatically, it's a system for shorthand notation. So comprehensions can be used with many different types, but they're almost always used with group types. And a lot of the ones that we learned at the end of chapter one, like lists, dictionaries, sets, and now generators. So bringing it full circle, any iterable object or any iterator object. Did I get you, or do you know the difference? Okay, so to recap, let's end the lesson with a quick summary of the mnemonics that we just learned and some of the concepts that they represent. First, we learned about two mnemonics, a rocking chair and an old school cartoon animator who's sitting in it. And that represented the topics of recursion and iteration. So we kind of learned the difference between the two. We learned that recursion is when a function needs to call on itself in order to solve a problem. So it's sort of pausing until it checks on its first answer, second answer, third answer, up and down, sort of a pyramid shape. And it means to run back in Latin. And then we learned that iteration is a more general term that talks about taking each item of something one after another and doing the same thing to it, sort of like a loop until every item has been iterated over. And then we learned two more mnemonics, a dog chasing his own tail in a circle and a cat's litter box. And this was to juxtapose the concept of when an object in Python is iterable and when it's an iterator. And we learned that if we're asking if an object is iterable, we're just asking, can it be looped over in a general way, even if it's out of order? But if we want to know if an object's an iterator, we're asking, can it be run asynchronously? Is it in some kind of a sequence that we can pause and come back to? And then we learned another pair of mnemonics, but this time not to juxtapose the differences, but because they go together. We learned about a gas generator and a yield sign that's glowing that it powers. And this represented our topics of a generator object and a yield keyword statement that we use inside of it. 
We learned that the generator is a special type of object inside of Python, sort of similar to our group types at the end of chapter one, but different in the sense that it can be paused and restarted. And we learned that it goes along with a special statement of yield, which allows us to break out of the sequence that it's working on, and that's special to just these generators. We also learned that Python has a few functions built in to help us work with generators, like next and iter. And finally, we learned a mnemonic, which was a jack-in-the-box, and it represented a topic called comprehensions. And this is a system of shorthand notation that helps us simplify syntax, especially when we're working with objects that are iterable. So now let's pull up our trusty Jupyter Notebook and start looking at examples of these ideas expressed in code. And thanks for hanging in there with me. I know the devil's in the details with these nuances, so you're doing a great job. Subscribe to our Mnemonic Academy YouTube channel for daily uploads that will help you learn amazing concepts through effortless associations.